So the Salisbury River Park project is a fantastic project that we're doing jointly with Wiltshire Council and Salisbury City Council. Uh, it's about providing so many things. It is about reducing flood risk to the area. We did have several properties that flooded in, in 2014 in this area uh, and wider field. And, and we know that in a more extreme event, we'd have quite a lot more that flood. So this, this project is about reducing that flood risk to it. But it's about so much more than that as well. It's about really improving the, the biodiversity of these areas. These are wonderfully important, you know, internationally designated watercourses we have here, which, which uh, have a whole variety of, of uh, really important species within them. And it's about improving things for them. Um, just to give one example for that, we have uh, Atlantic salmon that come and migrate through here from the sea up through here to lay their eggs further up. And we had barriers in the way that would stop them from there, they'll escape there. So we've been removing those barriers as part of the project and putting in sort of fish friendly weirs so that the salmon and other fish can migrate safely up. So really important in terms of the biodiversity improvements, but also it's about amenity improvements. So making it better for people in the area, We're providing a lot of uh, improvements to the walk, boardwalks, footpaths, cycle paths, um, picnic areas, big new playgrounds, all these things going in uh, as well. Uh, and it's also about improving the city centre, allowing for future growth and regeneration and job creation as well. So getting involved in the Ripple Effect project was, was you know, it came by, by chance almost in a way. Um, we were looking at how we'll do some sort of community engagement on the project and we were approached by Wessex Archaeology with this, this idea of, of the Ripple Effect and we thought this, this, is, this is perfect. It, it delivers just what we need so it helps us deliver our community engagement um, but also helps deliver these extra benefits that we wouldn't necessarily have delivered without that sort of project. Um, so really, it was down to, to Wessex Archaeology approaching us uh, with a fantastic idea that we were only too happy to, uh, to get involved in. The Ripple Effect is our two-year project. We're working with some local Salisbury residents and we are exploring the river as it changes through the seasons, but also the impact that the River Park scheme that's taking place in Salisbury is having on the river as well. So our sessions are three hours long. We meet every Wednesday morning and we come together and we have breakfast together. So it's a really lovely sociable time. So that's a big important um, part of the project actually for the group, for them to come together and have a chat. We look forward to seeing each other each week. We always have a creative element where we ask the participants or invite them to respond to what they're hearing, what, they've, what they're learning that day. And usually we have an expert that will come in and join us. So in the past we've had um, people from the Environment Agency who joined us. We're working with Wiltshire Wildlife Trust this year. And of course we bring in our own amazing team of experts from Wessex Archaeology. The Ripple Effect project fits in really well with the Salisbury River Park project. Um, by having a, a group involved like this, we're able to engage with a wider group of people than we would be able to otherwise. Um, they act as, as fantastic advocates for the project as well, so they are able to spread the message for us. Uh, but we're also able to time their work, the, all the sessions, to interact with what we're doing on site. So we make sure that when there's key things happening on site, uh, the Ripple Effect project are aware of it and we involve them. So for example, uh, we made sure they were on site when we were doing fish rescue work uh, to enable them to see what's going on and get actively involved in the project. Our fish rescue was brilliant. It's very exciting. Um, I'd never seen it done before. Uh, my dad, who was a fisherman, was very involved on this river. Obviously, he fished up and down here with the Salisbury Angling Club. Um, so to actually get in and see the fish that were in that particular stretch that they needed to clear, and they were taking them out and it was just exhilarating to watch. And they were pulling out hundreds and hundreds of fish, all different types, all different shapes and sizes. Um, and that was really good from my perspective because I'm not a fisherman myself, never really been involved with fish close up or hands on. So it was really nice to be able to see the size of the trout that we get around here. That I just did not appreciate. Um, all the, the grayling and, and all the rest of them that were coming out, it was really, really good.
chalk streams that we've got here, which are, are wonderfully important. There's, there's only about 200 of them in the entire world. Um, and we're you know, very, very fortunate to have them around here. Most of, the, most of those 200 chalk streams are in the south of England. Um, and they support a, a yeah, fantastic variety of species within them. But just to pick a few of the highlights, I mean, there are, 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 are literally hundreds. Um, but in terms of protected species, we have obviously in terms of the fish, we have the Atlantic salmon and trout and everything that, that use the watercourse migrate up and down here. But also in terms of the mammals, we have water voles in here. So water voles are, are amazingly important. They are um, Britain's most declining mammal, I believe. They've lost something like 70% of their population in the past sort of 40 years. Really, really protected, really rare um, uh, nationally, but, but locally we've got a lot of them, um, which, which is great. Probably my favourite moment was uh, going and, and doing the vole release actually, which was really quite cool. And it really was a nice day out to see the, you know, the nature of what's being put right. Well, I met Andy from the um, environmental agency down there and he obviously arranged and they, they, they had rehomed some of the voles that they relocated from here, but also they had some more that they'd had bred down in Cornwall. And, or Devon or somewhere down that way and they brought them up and there were 75 of them we released that day which was pretty cool. I've seen them occasionally before, I live in Harnham and I go across the town path you see them in the reeds and that sometimes but to sort of see that what, what the positive effect again that, that obviously the, their environment's been disturbed but there's a positive outcome to that but also there was the consideration not to just let them find their own way they were taken and rehomed you know and that was that was, a, again, something you wouldn't appreciate from the outside, but having had a bit of a backstory to it, it's, it's really satisfying to see that there, there is levels of, of care and consideration that you wouldn't think about as a layman, as you sort of just walking by looking at all this disruption, you know, but there is an end result and hopefully it's all positive. I do some uh, river fly sampling um, with Wiltshire Wildlife Trust and that's just to monitor the health of the river. Um, the river flies are almost like sort of the canaries of the river and as a group we got to do that it, with the Wiltshire Wildlife Trust on one of our, our days with the project. Um, so that was really great fun seeing everybody else have that joy of looking into a tray of just what just looks like river water and suddenly realising there is so much life here. So you've got the little freshwater shrimps that zip around like crazy. Um, I think we, we got some water beetles were in there as well. And then there's the things that are harder to tell apart. So the various um, types of nymph, um, mayfly nymphs. Um, it, it's amazing the life that can be in just a tray full of water. And it was brilliant to see and to share something that I do and see everybody else get to do it as well and, and share that excitement and amazement at, at looking in and being able to see the amount of life that's in there. And I think realise how lucky we are on the Avon. Um, there are rivers out there where you, you could take that tray and there really wouldn't be much in it. We have this on our doorstep. It is so brilliant to, to look at the river and think that is absolutely teeming with life. We, we need to look after it. We need to treasure this and make sure that carries on in the future. We've met some really exciting people through the project. We've met people from the Kia side, where they've been doing the actual groundworks. We've met people from the Environment Agency, uh, who've been making sure that they've overseen the project and that things have been done in the right order in the right time. And we've met a lot of people from Wessex Archaeology, which have been absolutely fascinating. And they've all been involved in their own different ways, whether it's digging ditches or whether it's rescuing voles and fish or whether it's looking at the stuff that's all gone in the past uh, to make up what was the river and what will be the river in the future. It's just so nice that everything's kind of come together in one big project and we've got to learn so much about the past, the present and the future. I could never imagine how on earth could I contribute in any way to Wessex archaeology. And Lee took us there and we met the process basically, we met the people that, and 
I, at one point, I, I just was so overwhelmed. And I thought, we've done it, you know, and this is uh, a genuine dream has come true, where my art is my archaeology. And again, people very willing to let us take part. Uh, and, and Angie really excelled. She was, she spots things. Uh, and we, we were looking at um, ancient um, snails and things from thousands of years ago, Ooh, important dating kind of things. And it was mind boggling for me. Uh, and again, a, a privilege to, to encroach on people doing, it, doing their job. This is them doing their job, but so willing to share. You know, uh, fantastic, fantastic experience and a dream come true. It was, it was wonderful to watch the environmental processing, to get so many buckets of what effectively looks like mud and to get so much information out of it. I mean, the, the guys that are up there, I mean, they work their socks off, bless them, and they must process hundreds of what looks like buckets of mud to get just a few small bits and pieces out. But we were looking at, at grains from, you know, a thousand years ago, and we're looking at tiny, the tiniest little snail shells, and that can tell you so much about the actual environment that those snails grew up in and lived in, and then obviously subsequently died in. Uh, and this is why the chalk is so important as well, because obviously that's made, mainly made from snail shells. So that's, it, it was really quite nice to be able to sort of tie that all in with the fact that we live on the chalk and that's created from the snail shells and they've got snail shells that can tell you so much about the environment, the woodlands, the grasses and everything else that there is around. But it was, it was just fascinating to be fair. Uh, to actually just see the whole process from start to finish. Though we did choose an incredibly chilly day, and even with gloves on, the cold water and the buckets of mud wasn't quite as exciting as it would have been in the middle of summer. But it was really, really good. If any, if ever you get a chance, just go along and have a go, because the guys up there are just so, so knowledgeable. Really, really good fun. I, I could never imagine ever being able to hold you know, a flint axe. And there I am with it in my hand. And I thought I made that connection to somebody from thousands of years ago. Uh, and I thought, you, you've got to create from this. <laughs> I have to respond to this experience. And, and I did with quite an elaborate, um, long piece of work. Again, James gave us long pieces of paper I like this project in, in that we go big and long a lot because it's like river flows, you know. So the, the actual material to me reflects very strongly in the project. I mean, it's a very appropriate kind of material we use. The ripple effect for me is about giving people a chance to access the river in creative ways. So essentially, it's all about connecting with the river through your senses, through your imagination and your emotions. So like bringing your whole sense to your experience of the river, really. And then we also use art to record our experiences so that we can share those with other people as well. I mean, the way we use art is a very person-centered way of using it. We're not coming in and saying there's one good way of drawing, for instance. We're not uh, all sitting down and drawing the same thing in the same way. It's about providing the tools and providing a supportive atmosphere so that people can identify something that they're interested in and record that in a way that's relevant for them. Because um, we want to sort of meet everyone where they are in terms of their needs and their abilities and their backgrounds. Um, and also respect that people have a lot of knowledge themselves as well. So it's not that we're coming with all the answers, but it's, it's a dialogue really. We're coming along and sharing our skills and experience and they're doing the same. And between us, we're coming up with some artwork that hopefully reflects that. I, I enjoy the sketching and the little, little, the little details of the um, objects that have come out of the river. Um, and I did quite a long table of, of all the different objects. Uh, and to think that they had been lost uh, years in the past and then have been refound when they collected the drainage together. My favourite activity was the cyano printing 
um, because it was intriguing to see how the print came out um, with the bright blue colours. It's been slightly scary to feel at first there was a pressure to be artistic. Um, I've enjoyed art, I'm not, wouldn't call myself very artistic. Um, and it's something I did at school and then kind of dropped because if you're not brilliant at something, then don't bother doing it at all. And it's really given me a chance to realise that's, that's not true. If it makes you feel good, if it is a good outlook for you, if it boosts your well-being, then do it. You, you don't have to be Picasso. Most people in the world aren't Picasso or Leonardo or Michelangelo. It doesn't mean you can't enjoy expressing yourself. And we've really been encouraged just to be not necessarily artistic, but creative and to, to give our creative responses. It doesn't matter if they're not brilliant. They're fun, they're genuine, they're authentic, they're how you feel. They're part of your reaction to the natural world and to the, the social complex of everything we've learnt. They're a way of contributing, they're a way of expressing yourself. The little box, the inspiration behind that was really the entire project. It was trying to work out how to get the idea of looking through the depths of the river, looking through the depths of history that we've done. We've covered so many eras in history. We've looked at the prehistoric, we saw some of the geology of the area, um, some of the, the weird and wonderful animals that used to live here, like various types of tigers and mammoths and things. It was trying to incorporate that. And then you've got the human history. You've got, we saw fabulous flint tools that were absolutely tiny, minuscule things that just blew our minds because how did people do that? Um, and then you've got the actual, the natural history of the river. So the things that live at the bottom of it, like the caddis fly larvae, um, and all the, we saw a, a jar full of tiny prehistoric snails that have always been knocking around in the river, still are. Um, and then the thing, you've got the things towards the top, the things that we see. So the, the flora and fauna that on the banks of the river, like the flowers. Um, along the Avon, we're really lucky to have the banded demoiselles. Um, which are a fabulous damselfly, really, really striking. Um, so I try to incorporate those. And it's just the idea of being able to look through the depths, take the time that we've been so lucky to do during this project and to look deeper through it. And really, it's given us the chance to appreciate. It's not just the surface. We see the surface every day, but there's so much more to it. Um, and I wanted to try and get at least some of that. In, into that just that little box. I, I hope, I hope at least it looks pretty. Yeah, the artwork's been been uh, both relaxing and, and giving me something to think about when I've been busy with other things, and and in particular the, the two sort of drawings that I did. Spent, spent the most time with and enjoyed doing was one of, of the old mill which we were encouraged to write a little poem and then I drew a picture of the old mill in Harnham the pub which I've grown up pretty much right on its doorstep and cycled past it when I was a kid doing paper runs and things like that and now live close to it and, and have found swimming in the river there you know quite revitalising if you like in recent months um, and that was that was really nice to do that and and have a pictorial view of that and the other thing I really enjoyed doing was when we were down at Hengersbury Head and we, we saw you know at the, the end of the Avon if you like and I sat on the beach and, and, and did a drawing of that which I really you know it's fairly basic but it's it, 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 it's an interpretation of what I saw on the day you know um, and that's yeah it was satisfying to do that. Angus were ahead. I thought I'd gone back in time. Uh, uh, I mean, I hadn't seen the seaside for a very long time. 
And I told Lee, so Lee was on a mission for me to see the sea, you know, and be on a beach. And, and, and again, we, we were uh, ex seeing, th we went to the little museum and, and, and looking, and you suddenly realise how, how Neolithic people actually lived there. So again, we were experiencing what others have already experienced. So for me, I had a personal mission really. I just wanted to stand in front of the sea and it was a sunny day and there was you know the silver waves and all this and it was incredible just to breathe in the air you know um, that is a highlight for me and, and I think that the group enjoyed it too we were very much um, observing things and again being very creative uh, James makes sure we do something creative when we can. So I, li I like that. I like, we, can, we can muck about as much as we like. <laughs> but we do get stuff done. You know, thing, things are thought and discussed. And, uh, but it was such a, a great day. What an end. That was like kind of... And we had ice cream. <laughs> we were really spoiled that day. But God, I, I'd never been there. So everything I looked at was new. What a place for, for the soul and the mind, you know. Uh, yeah, uh, again, this journey, this, this continuous journey is, has taken us to some fantastic places. Well, it is. Seven years ago, I had a stroke, left-hand side peripheral stroke on there, and it wiped me out. The person I was before, the person that Angie used before, doesn't exist anymore. Bits of it do, but, but it doesn't. Uh, coming to this course, meeting everybody for the first time was hellish nerve-wracking for me in a bit where it was off and on whether I was coming or not. But we met Lee, we met James, we met Mr. Photography here. Always know him because he's got the things on his head like that. Uh, for me, after two sessions, I mean, three sessions, I think, by the time then we got to meet the whole gang, it was like I imagine I used to feel when I went and met family that you were relaxed, you could say say what you meant. You, I had to be guarded because of my problems on there because everybody else in the group has got their own foibles, their own things in life that they're dealing with on there. After the time of being away from people, it's very difficult to get back into. But the gentleness and the kindness and the, the encouragement by other people especially the people from the, from, the, from the team. I mean, get me to do anything artistic. You just as well beat your head against a brick wall. I can build your house from the floor up. Or something. Can't decorate it because everything's magnolia to me. Uh, but to, to do things like that is bringing out another side of me on there that is quite a private side. And to be able to expose yourself to other people, be it a very small group, is just lovely. And thank you to you all. It's been a real privilege to actually be involved with this. It's been so nice and everybody's been so friendly as well. We've got our little group, our little gang, and I think um, there have been some friendships forged there that will probably last way beyond this, which is nice. Uh, but it's also a case of we've all felt very included and we've tried to make sure that everybody else has felt included as well. It's a super thing to be able to do. It's given us an insight into the project. It's given us up-to-date news on the project, which meant that we could actually pass that information out, uh, in my case, via Facebook and to friends. 
Uh, other people have done it in different ways. But it's been really, it's been really good fun. And if you ever get a chance to get involved in a project like this, I'd say grab it with two hands because you're going to really enjoy it. It would be nice to think that all of the people who've been ripplers, so who've been on the Ripple Effect project, will all sort of create our own ripples. Um, I know I've been talking to my, my family and friends about, about what we've learned, so passing on snippets of information, um, hopefully infusing them with a love for the river as well. I'm sure everybody else is doing similar. Um, it's a brilliant thing about information. It doesn't just sort of fall in and go in a hole. It spreads out. Um, it's not something that people keep to themselves. They always want to share. Well, it's nice to know that you'll see people that you know each time um, and that you'll be trying something new. I think we've made fr fr friends with each other and we've been able to share all sorts of things together. The main impact on my well-being has been valued. Uh, what I've done for the last 43 years, even though I've done it, you're not necessarily valued. But this group was valued from the start. We were asked to, you know, would we like to take part? And we all agreed to do so. And I realized that we all, whatever we brought was being valued all of us and that is an incredible feeling so my well-being went up you know my actual feeling about myself and the worth of my work um, i'd found a place where it could express itself and have others express because i what i do tends to be very isolated so to be amongst others is is a great lift you know um, so yeah, my well-being, I would leave and thinking, why did we have to start, you know, we often said to Lee, can't we just have another half an hour, <laughs> because it's so brilliant, you know, so yeah, that's, that's, um, that was the main thing, to, to be valued, a great feeling, you know. The Ripple Effect project has been wonderful for my well-being. Um, it is the main reason I joined. Once I joined, there are so many other reasons to carry on. You find out so much. Um, but on my well-being, I'm really going to miss it because it's a little bit of meeting people. Um, I can cope with a little bit, not a lot, so it was just right for me. And getting out in nature and seeing it through slightly different eyes so rather than sort of just a naturalist sort of eyes trying to see the beauty and appreciate the, the creative impact that has i think opened up a new dimension for me on how i experience the world and the wildlife around i'm very grateful that that it, it's always good to have a new dimension added um yeah i i'm, I'm really going to miss it Our river. We live on the chalk as so many before, who raised up the sheep and the lambs we adore. It comes through the chalk and rises in springs to nourish the valleys, keeping them green. It waters the sheep, cattle, chicken and horse. It is home to so much as it flows on its course. From lush river valleys on down to the sea, passing so much as it flows in between. Through hamlet and village, it ambles on by, across meadows and marshes, ne'er letting them dry. It dashes on through towns and cities alike, contained in its course, it powered the mills. From fulling the cloth to grinding the flour, its labours continued from hour to hour. Freed from its constraints, 
it picks up the pace, rushing and rolling around all the hills. Now home to the trout and the grayling alike, all food for the kingfisher, otter and pike, a watery haven surrounded by peace, giving us space to relax and unwind. How few people study and really engage the role of the river in our day and age. Sustaining, enriching, improving our lives, past, present and future all fully entwined. <laughs>